Today's lesson is about subtracting mixed number fractions when you have to borrow. I'm going to talk about why you have to borrow in, in a moment. But if you look at this first question, 4 and 1 half minus 1 and 3 fourths. Now, what I'm going to show you on both of these examples can be done horizontally, but I think it's easier to do it vertically, and here's why. Let's go ahead and copy the problem down. 4 and 1 half minus 1 and 3 fourths. Okay, this is how you originally learned how to subtract, probably in columns. And the problem is, I cannot take 3 fourths away from 1 half. I definitely have to find a common denominator first. Okay, now I'm going to assume that you already know how to do that. And we're going to rewrite these fractions so they have the same denominator. I notice that this is a denominator of 2 and that's the denominator of 4. So I'm going to make a denominator of 4 for both fractions. So 4 and 1 half becomes 4 and 2 fourths. Okay, and I'm going to subtract 1 and 3 fourths. Now what a lot of students tend to do is, a very common mistake, is say 2 minus 3 is 1 and write down 1 fourth. But no, you can't. 3 fourths is larger than 2 fourths. You can't take three things away from only two things. So we have to do what's called borrowing. Now here's the process. What I have to do is I have to borrow one whole from the 4 and 2 fourths. Okay? So what I'm going to do is change the 4 into a 3. All right, so what I've really done is I've grabbed a hole. Now the hole that I grabbed is 1, but I need to rewrite it as 4 fourths. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut in just a second. But what is 2 fourths plus 4 fourths? 6 fourths. So what I'm doing is temporarily writing it as an improper fraction, okay? Sometimes people call it a top-heavy fraction. In other words, 3 and 6 fourths is the same thing as 4 and 2 fourths, but I have to write it because I need a bigger number on top in order to subtract. All right, and I still have 1 and 3 fourths down the bottom here. And so now, I always look at the fraction part first. 6 fourths take away 3 fourths is 3 fourths. No problem there. And now it's 3 take away 1, not 4 take away 1. Okay, so 2 and 3 fourths. Obviously, we need to see if we need to uh, reduce that or, or uh, simplify it, but no, we're done. All right, so the process again is borrowing from the whole number on the top fraction. Rewrite it as a top heavy fraction or improper fraction. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this next example real quick 12 and 1 third minus 8 and 5 sixths. All right, so first of all, always check the denominators. Okay, I'm going to have to rewrite 12 and 1 third as 12 and 3 goes into 6 twice, so I'm going to just double both numbers, and we're going to call this 2 sixths. Okay, let's go ahead and just copy down this bottom fraction. Um, in both my examples here, I did not have to change the bottom mixed number fraction, but sometimes you will. So again, do not say 2 minus 5 is 3. Okay, 5 is too big. We have to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from the 12, and that's going to make 11. Okay, the one that I borrowed is actually 6 sixths. Okay, but I already had 2 sixths. So I have to combine the 2 sixths with the 6 sixths and get 8 sixths. Okay, now it's kind of a mental process. You need to make sure that you you know, do it correctly, and I'll show you a shortcut in just a minute. So, do not subtract the whole numbers first. Always look at the fraction parts first. So now, 8 take away 5 is 3, 3 6, and 11 take away 8 is 3, and simplify our answer, 3 and 1 half. Very good. Let me show you the shortcut. Now, 2 and 1 fifth, let's say I had to borrow because whatever this fraction was down here, it was too big to take away from 1 fifth. So I'm just going to show you a shortcut. What you do is you change the 2 to a 1, and you add those two numbers, 6. Okay? 
keep the same denominator. 1 and 6 fifths is the same as 2 and 1 fifth. Again, take a whole number away, 2 becomes 1, add the two numbers here of the fraction to make 6 to get your top number. All right, what about 8 and 2 fifths? Well, 8 becomes 7, 2 plus 5 is 7, so 7 and 7 fifths would be your top heavy fraction. Look at this next one, 16. 16 becomes 15 because we're borrowing a whole. Now we're going to add the 1 and the 8 to get 9, 15 and 9 eighths. Now you would be able to subtract. And the final example, 23 and 2 sevenths, what is it? 22 and 2 plus 7 is 9, 9 sevenths. All right, so that's the add the fraction rule. That's only when you have to borrow. Good luck. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.